Hey everybody, this is Rido, and we are back with another recording of Hearthstone. Today is Friday, February 23rd. We've hit another one of those pitfalls of Hearthstone. I desperately need victories on the European account. Can't cheat on the European account. At best, maybe I can get one of these people to let me play and win. I need to win with the Paladin deck um, and at least once and I need to do several other things and that's kind of the, the way it goes and even if I did add friends randomly here and tried to get more people it's not like random people are going to inherently let me win anyways. So your next bet, best bet is to play the Murloc. And we were playing the Murloc deck because that's kind of the only Murloc deck we had. Uh, I guess we can try this Paladin deck on rank play. See if we can get some quick victories. Uh, everything's falling apart. We started off pretty quickly today going through what well, is not a huge amount of news but I guess I'm taking my time on it I had some plans that at this rate I won't get around to to actually do some paperwork and schedule videos make sure things are scheduled right I don't know if that's actually gonna happen now um, but it probably should PC Gamer has an article save big on Sniper Elite series this weekend. I think that's just up to 80% off on Rebellion Steam sale. Let's see. Let's actually look at that. So, 70% off. Personally, not the best deal ever, but it might very well be the best deal you'd get on some of these Rebellion games. Because some of these publishers don't ever let their games go off, uh, go down. So Sniper Elite 4, for instance, that was released February 13th, 2017, is 66% off to make it $20.39. Uh, not terrible until you look at the Season Pass, which is only 50% off for $17.49. Add those back together, you're still paying forty dollars for what is effectively a nearly two-year-old game. Discover a minion, give it plus one, plus one. Hmm. Must move quickly. Hmm. Give all minions in your hand plus one, plus one. I have all these cards that are pumping up cards. I don't understand what to play in here with these. With, with these. Uh, the Zombie Army Trilogy is 80% off for 89 cents. Uh, Sniper Elite 4, not actually on my wish list. Uh, maybe I should add to my wish list. Zombie Army Trilogy is. So it's 80% off for $8.99. 8 that's a good deal. That would be something I would ask people to donate to me in in the effort to, mm. in some weird way, monetize this channel. Now that it's not monetized by YouTube. Hmm. Which, sadly, that's just going to be what happens all the time is me begging, e-begging and shilling on this channel like my channel is literally going to have to be made worse because of YouTube because of what they've done and frankly I'm not sure if I can handle the frustration when I start to think about the 5,000 videos that were making me money every week pennies certainly but I was making a dollar or two every week after all that work now that's all gone and it's gone very possibly forever For justice. 
the only way this turns around and, and fixes itself is uh, if there's perhaps a system in which I start to see more subscribers but according to my analytics I lost seven subscribers last week like I'm getting new subscribers definitely two or three a week but also YouTube D subs you people it just has people D sub um, I also want to be aware if right now there's kind of a glitch on my Twitter where I'm double announcing videos if that's irritating anybody let me know uh, and I'll spend some time to try and fix that uh, but but I don't want to irritate somebody and I don't want to flood their Twitter feed uh, the sniper leak complete pack is 74% off for $30.94 which apparently doesn't include sniper elite uh, four but it includes two and one or sniper elite version two the idea of the sniper games makes some sense I'll play them a little bit but I don't think I'd ever get crazy into them battle zone is maybe a does this work on PC or is this VR only uh, I think it works on PC without VR. Balzone is 66% off for $13.59. Uh, looks kind of like a Tron game. So now it clicks to your hand. I don't want to play this like this. Whenever this attacks and kills somebody, it should get two Murlocs from my deck. Which, maybe that'll work. I don't think it actually will though, because I don't think I have any Murlocs. Rogue Troopers Redux is 50% off the 13 does. Sniper Elite 3 plus the Silver. Season Pass is 75% off for $12.49. Um, Sniper Elite 3 alone is 80% off for $5.99. It might really come down to the fact that the season pass for Sniper Elite 3 is not actually useful. Uh, Battle Zone 98 Redux is 75% off for $5. And those Paladin cards do not work at all. We're back to Murlox. And I should be playing casual, but it doesn't seem like it works no matter what you do. Um, Sniper Elite Nazi Zombie Army 2 is $70, uh, 70% off for $4.49. Sniper Elite Nazi Zombie Army 1 is 70% off for $4.49. Ground Control Collection is 66% off for $3.05. The Lords of the Realm complete is 66% off for $4.41. The Grand Control Anthology is 66% off for $1.69. So if you wanted to force me to figure out what Ground Control Anthology is because you have some, some love for it or know what it is and think it's a good game or it's a bad game that I would have some input on it, that one's not even two dollars that's maybe maybe even one pound it, you could buy that and gift that one to me uh ground control 2 is 66 percent off for a dollar 69 so i have to assume that the ground control anthology doesn't actually include ground control 2 operation exodus or something weird is happening there lords of the realm is 66 percent off and that is 67 cents so I, I gotta gotta check this one out like what does Lords of the Realm look like it is an old looking game uh, and that that's kind of the problem Let and why a lot of these games even though it's mostly positive at 76% uh, 
games are just getting so old these days, it, it's stopped making a lot of sense to, to purchase really cheap ones when I, I just know I'll never get around to. Lords of the Realm 3 in comparison is 66% off for a dollar and one cents. Let's look at how old that is. This came out in 1996 and it still looks pretty bad as a top-down real-time strategy. But that was Lords of the Realm 2. Lords of the Realm 3 is actually $1.69 and it came out in 2004 but it's mostly negative. Interesting. So time itself must have hurt that game also the fact that it looks different probably hurt it. it it looks like an ages of empires style game and even the ages of empires games didn't work uh lords of the magic special edition is 66 percent off for a dollar and 69 cents wolfie the red hound di red hood diaries is 66% off at $3.39. Now this game is an unfinished game, uh, but it tickles my interest. Uh, I don't know if that's a good term to use. Probably not. I'll try never to use it again. Uh, but it's, it's a very interesting looking game, even if it's unfinished paying $3.40 for something that, that had my interest when it first came out in 2015. It's cool. Uh, it was, I believe, purchased from the original creators who kickstarted it and then ran out of money and just, uh, just put out, like, Act 1. So, it's, it's, Act 1 is finished, yes, but the rest of the story is it's left on a cliffhanger. I definitely do want to play that. that that's on my wish list. Uh, even if it is bad. Rogue Trooper, 66% off for $3.39. Moon Base Commander, 75% off for $1.50. Another game I want, Judge Dread, Dread vs. Death. Uh, not only is playing a Judge Dread game a good search engine optimization game, it actually is... In this instance, the game worth playing because it, uh, because it is a very unique 2009 experience uh, that tells a kind of odd Judge Dredd tale that you don't see oh in the two Judge Dredd movies that were made. Something closer to what actually happens in the comic books. Also, Aliens vs. Predator Classic 2000 is 75% off for $1.24. Judge Dredd is $2, by the way. So these are great gifts that people could get for themselves or for, for me. We'll try and broaden out the definition of why we're covering this content at all. Uh, I really don't have time to make separate videos that would cover the sales every week on Steam. Maybe the Humble Bundles I can make a separate video as an advertisement video, but like, again, my channel is, is going to become worse because I'm going to have to spend time making advertisement videos now. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Alien vs. Predator, I want to get all the Aliens games that are out there. It's 75% off, $1.25. Evil Genius, 75% off, it's $2.50. Another game I want to play, a little bit buggy, 2009 game, but alright. So, for the company that's most known for the Sniper Elite series, as I'm scrolling down and seeing some other Sniper Elite DLCs and things that are 50% off, uh, there's at least three or four games in that sale that are not Sniper Elite games that that have been on my list and I've been more interested in having uh, instead. Quite hit the mark. Uh, let's try. 
let's try and attack here. How we want to do this? Here. And well, then let's we'll just do this. And then we'll just do this. And then we'll do this. And then we'll jump. So, yeah, some rebellion things. The celebration runs from Monday, February 26th. Uh, runs from now to Monday, February 26th at 10 a.m. Pacific Time. Uh, if you wanted to buy everything from the Rebellion Anthology, it'd be $141.79. Uh, that's quite a lot. And But that's slowly what I do, is I buy things from specific companies that have things like anthology bundles. And depending on the bundle, several of them actually allow for you to... You to uh, They, they allow for you to lower the price for games that you already have purchased. Let's see. I'm not sure I want to do that yet. So I'm going to do this instead. Cast a random spell on the 10th turn. And to be honest, Rebellion is not even a major publisher so there's not that much even on that list that that's on my wish list now, now my wish list is is does have 1800 games on it and many of those are pre-order early access games that i'm not ready for not ready to consider completely seriously game seriously hearthstone just freaking give me a disconnect Give me a quick victory or something. This is irritating as all get out to have game after game, hour after hour of losses. And I know I'm not paying attention, but it's not, it's really a chicken and egg scenario where the reason I don't pay that much attention to Hearthstone is because even when I was playing this game before I was streaming it, uh, and recording it because I played some Hearthstone before I even started my YouTube channel. Even when I was paying attention, it was awful. It's always this awful experience of matchmaking. You, maybe I am getting a 50% win ratio, but that's not the right amount. I want an 80 to 90% win ratio in a game. I kind of demand it. And. Uh, Man, I'm gonna eventually just rage quit Hearthstone because of this stuff. It's ridiculous. That's what I want. Give me three more of those. So I can be done. These daily quests are killing me. They, they're the problem. Because otherwise I would have just stopped. I can play Warrior now. Yay. So instead of playing just the Paladin Murloc deck, which probably should be the deck that wins anyways, I can now either play a Taunt or a Weapon Pirate deck. Let's see what happens there. Hmm. Hmm. So... To get off that rant, because I mean, what can I really do is that, other than say I hate Hearthstone? Uh, Tech Spot, which is a new, new one for me. I'm starting to follow Tech Spot more. Uh, has a article feature called "The Quest of Making Better Video Game Controllers." It's long, and the it really is kind of built around the idea of the Xbox Elite controller uh, which I've heard that the Xbox Elite controller is actually not as good it's better than the Xbox One controller but it's not sturdy 
And so people who bought it like a year ago, uh, I heard in one instance, have now broken it and are back to to using a regular controller. I've been on the other end of that idea where I've been buying Xbox 360 wired controllers for my PC because I want to use wired. And now I've just recently, in the last, last one I broke uh, after about a year, I break them about a year, honestly. Controllers for me and I think for any main major gamer, you're going to break your controller, wear it down, wear down the bearing after a year. Uh, so I moved up to an Xbox One. Like Xbox One is a little bit better than the Xbox 360, but I wouldn't move up to the Elite. The little flappy paddles on the back of the controller doesn't make it much sense to me. And I've every time I've thought about it, I don't know if there really is much more you can add to a controller that the game people would use. Like, nobody wants a scroll wheel, I think, in a game. I don't think people want a touch screen. I don't think people want a like thumb ball or mouse ball. Uh, we must you could probably add another pause button. The the forward and back button might do something helpful. Um, I feel like maybe the four way D pad could turn into a sixteen way D pad. And that might change uh, change people's opinion a little bit on it, but th th that's kind of the only thing. The analog direction, left and right stick, even though they're off balance, is kind of still all right. Uh, you really get into the realm of should you put foot paddles or something with the controllers, something that's not even hand controlled. Uh, because I am and I assume lots of people are weak as far as using their pinky fingers or their ring fingers and, and frankly even trying to specifically control something with a middle finger is a little difficult for me. I don't really expect that you could have more triggers and more buttons. Uh, we're limited by the number of human hands. Uh, vibration controlling things like that could be added sure but make more vibration a directional thing for menus like the Wiimote on the face of it seems like it makes sense but it actually just splits the field and has you controlling the controller one way when you're playing the game and a different way when you're not um, Maybe put in one of those machines that sprays scents in your face so you can smell. Uh, there was speakers in controllers at one time in the Wiimotes. That never really got added to the Xbox standard. That would be kind of cool, but it got barely used. Uh, honestly, just a middle pause button. <laughs> That's kind of all, all I'd like is help people get to the menu more Drink with me, friend. so yeah you could have a whole row above the start and back buttons on an xbox controller just like f1 f2 f3 f4 for menus uh, that would probably help a little bit uh, but that's kind of all it like i cannot think of anything more to really do to improve a controller which is kind of a good thing because that means while Nintendo will continue to do whatever Nintendo wants to do with controllers, everybody else will be happy to uh, stay with a standard. Uh, moving on, Rock Paper Shotgun has an article that League of Legends has published its Hextech Loot Crate odds. Uh, since the government of China forced them to publish odds, at least in China, they're just now going to publish everything. Um, the odds are, uh, there's still a lot of companies out there trying to get around publishing their odds in China, but they're not going to succeed. And League of Legends, I believe, is 
is owned by Riot, which I believe is owned by Tencent, which was a Chinese company in the first place. Uh, I could be wrong about half those things I just said. Uh, and let's see. Play this. What this? So I look forward to seeing the odds for like Hearthstone getting published. Uh, we kind of already know what they are, but it'd be nice to see the actual odds and do a rant about that. AMD released GPU drivers designed to optimize Sea of Thieves and Final Fantasy VII. Uh, we don't get a lot of articles about AMD pushing out new drivers, so I'll try to be fair here. Uh, I don't think AMD puts out video drivers as often as NVIDIA does, because NVIDIA is specifically designed around every month they're going to be ha they're going to have a new thing. Play this. I think we've got a victory. Finally. Uh, Yumi Niki Dream Diary is mixed at 64% right now. Uh, this is the remake, I believe. Uh, well, it says here, the new Yumi Niki Dream Diary is not a remake, but the full reimagining of the original reconstructed and enhanced using elements and cells of modern indie games. There was a lot of coverage for this game. I could never really figure out why anybody seemed like they liked it because it seemed like it was just kind of this surreal walking simulator with no real purpose. I still would really prefer to quick victories so let's run down here what in the world is this featuring old and new original characters and then they're showing me what looks like a pencil sketch of some kind of monster that looks like a squatting um, woman with no arms and a weird like elephant snout head Versus Jaina. Like, it's you weird. Asked for it. weird Let's look at the negative reviews and see what they've got a problem with. 67 negative reviews. Really not what I was expecting. The original Yumi Niku was largely an exploration based game and the horror aspect felt incidental. It felt like the game was trying to be a unique thing and it just happened to be another thing. I especially loved the... Let's see. Lost my place. I especially loved how the game never really forced you to do anything. You could just explore crazy and unique worlds at your own pace and come up with your own explanation as to what's going on. When I heard there was going to be a 3D remake, remake I was very excited. An exploration game in 3D environment really would have suited Yumi Niku's style very well. Unfortunately, the game decided to focus very heavily on puzzle and horror aspects more akin to a game like Limbo or Inside. Those games are great in their own way, but I felt like what made Yumi Niki so great has been lost in this style. Uh, next negative review. I love the original game. Uh, is the first thing. Uh, next review starts... To be brief, it's a poorly made clone uh, of games like Limbo and Inside that use, uh, utilizes the IP of Yumi Niki, but none of what makes the original the classic goods become. Uh, next review is pros. The scenery looks gorgeous. Most of the characters' models look good. It doesn't capture the original atmosphere very well, but it does a decent job of making its own. Cons definitely doesn't have twenty dollars worth of content collision detecting gets pretty bad invisible walls everywhere boring platforming areas needlessly obtrusive platforms puzzles puzzles that should be simple aren't but aren't a stealth section a effing stealth section who said hey you know what that's popular in 2004 japanese indie rpg maker gaming 
Yumi Niki needs a stealth section. So the first three, com the last three complaints are the stealth section. Um, in a weird way, this kind of motivates me to want to play Yumi Niki the remake now. Because now there's a controversy. I don't want to pay $20 for it. I'm, they are totally right on that. And I would prefer to play Inside, which is uh, have which I haven't gotten around to. Uh, let's see, can we? Hmm. Let's just continue playing here. This and should I play this? Should I just keep playing this? I'll save. I'm trying to look at the screenshots of this remake. It seems cheaply made. Hmm. This kind of is a game that I might try to squash play inside then play this and say look how bad this is compared to the inside that we just played uh, as a a B comparison and then after playing the old the new Yumi Niki game I would try to play the old one since I've never played either one of them that is a rare case in which I'm adding a bad game to my to my Wish list, and I know it's a bad game uh, from the word go. Right, if we do this, and then this, and now, and now, and this, and that, and attack there. And see, I believe that the reason I'm even talking about Yumi Niki is just because Steam said, hey, it's now available. Uh, the Dead Island franchise is up to 75% off. Also directly from Steam. So, Dead Island Retro Revenge. I don't remember this being a game. When did this come out? June 1st, 2016. Wow, this is a side-scrolling beat-em-up. I totally missed the Dead Island game. Also, the Dead Island Definitive Edition and Dead Island Riptide Definitive Edition. We'll go ahead and add that. The current recent reviews are mostly positive on Riptide. The overall reviews are mixed, however. Which is kind of probably a little fair. A lot of that is going to be compared to um, to what Techland did instead with Dying Light. Let's see, Escape Dead Island is apparently not on sale at all, though. Um, so. Why is that one even mentioned when it's not on sale? So, 75% off for $11.10, you get the Dead Island Retro Revenge. Uh, you get Dead Island the Definitive Edition, which is a different edition than what I have, and kind of a ripoff to buy a pretty bad game a second time. But I think they did make some moderate changes to the Definitive Edition. Uh, and then you also get Dead Island Rip Riptide Definitive Edition. We must cleanse the sun well. What's not listed here is a the previous version of Dead Island at all. So is that just not available for purchase? Hmm. Hmm. 
<laughs> I guess maybe it isn't ju it just isn't for purchase anymore. Because I'm not seeing the original version of Dead Island. Let's see, relevance, release date, name. Like, I, don't, I don't think, I don't have a way. Yeah, there's no, still no way to really search what? these, no. these websites. Uh, Steam. Steam search still kind of sucks. Uh, PC Gamer has an actual review for All Walls Must Fail, uh, which they gave it a 72. Uh, having last stream looked up how they give rating scores, it's pretty crazy. Um, how they break things down and what a 72 means in their mind versus what it would mean in a normal person's mind. Uh, they say it's a cool idea with a well-realized theme, but this game would have benefited from longer it being in early access longer what to, do? Uh, to me looking at the screenshots it seems like it's not super interesting and if it's just 70 I think you're pretty much agreeing with that there's a job listing for Ubisoft I don't know if we're doing job listings today uh, we can close that summon this I could summon two of those. Hey, look at that. I just want. Uh, Discord has expanded its verified server program to esports teams. This is a short, short article, so nothing really special to say there. Uh, if you were trying to get a verified server on discord which i'm not sure if that really is a thing that needs to be a thing i'm not sure if discord is really going to be something that's still around in a couple of years kind of how snapchat right now is falling apart uh i never got into snapchat the idea as a content creator of being able to do anything with snapchat is kind of ridiculous uh, and it seems like with their update on their program nobody's happy with it uh, for me personally snapchat always had this feeling that it was being used by by either 18 year olds or younger people to send pictures of themselves naked to their to their friends <laughs> and it was just built around this idea of the instant destroying uh, uh, self-destructive message and if that's kind of all I that's all I thought it or felt like it was ever being used as so if if I was ever to come across a scenario where somebody suggested me to use snapchat I'd be it'd be the equivalent of somebody suggesting that I use grinder or tinder or something I'd be like, well, that doesn't really work for a video game critic on YouTube. Hmm. Rock, Paper, Shotgun has an article How Small Game Makers Found Their Community with Bitsy. Never heard of Bitsy. Uh, Bitsy is a game that was released to itch.io, a humble game making tool described by its creator as a little editor for little games of worlds or worlds. And it seems like they're basically 8-bit pixel type games and apparently a lot of indie people used it to make a bunch of 8-bit pixel games probably because it was easy and now itch.io and perhaps steam is flooded with a bunch of kind of low quality uh, games I don't want to be a gatekeeper, but I kind of have to be a gatekeeper here and put out my argument that if you can't afford, if you're not ambitious enough to pay an artist to make your game, you shouldn't be making a video game. You just shouldn't. Video games are visual audio media. If you can't do the video and the visual, 
and or you can't do the audio you should make a different form write a book if you're a good writer draw if you're a good artist draw a comic book if you're an artist if you're such a terrible writer that you can't write a terrible comic book and with really good art then work with somebody who's such a terrible artist that they can't can't draw anything uh, Charge. Go ahead and try and kill this guy. Um, three plus this. Job's done. Hmm. Um, and yeah, if you're gonna make a video game, you have to have artists, you have to have audio, you can't do 8 bit pixel things. Even if, if, it, if you're a really good artist and you just want to use this artistic style, it's too bad. Like, it's been flooded. Uh, in the same way that Pablo Picasso can't finger paint in and say that's an artistic style or decision, it, people can't use 8-bit anymore. It, it's that opportunity has been wasted and used up right, so I'm gonna hit this and then hit that and I'm still going through this two-page article on PC gamer I mean rock paper sh shotgun and they're just showing all of these boring looking each style of games. I have no interest in any of them. Uh, Gamer Sutra has an article, Net Neutrality Repeal Effective, starting on April 23rd. So, Net Neutrality will be dissolved effectively April 23rd, as noted by the revocation order published to the Federal Register by the Federal Communication Commission today. That's the FCC. It is possible although slightly unlikely that the Congress Senate could could pass a order or a law that would maintain net neutrality but it's not super likely to happen that was a poor choice I just did I should have attacked the face attacked with the weapon and let's just kill this with the weapon Play, play way too conservatively. Uh, so. If by April 23rd the order is still effective, it's likely that the internet providers will begin to offer tiered plans, which will, will allow them to pick and choose what content consumers see depending on how much they're paying these tiered plans may impact the speed of game downloads and online games and certainly lots of other things let's do this watch this and that All he needs to do is six damage and he'll still win. Um, the whole net neutrality thing is getting getting forgotten as we have school shootings, as we have uh, investigations into possible corruption, collusion, and interference in the United States electoral system. Uh, net neutrality just gets forgotten as it kind of happens with the news cycles and with people being very flippant and people not even bothering to vote uh, and gerrymandering making it unhelpful to vote anyways uh, there's a lot that needs to be done <sighs> hmm and I suppose even in my bitterest thought if I was to say, you know what, screw net neutrality, let's see YouTube get totally screwed and fall to pieces. 
because of what they've done to small YouTubers by kicking them out. Like, even in that bitterest thought, that, that doesn't really solve anything. And speaking of not solving anything, we now need to get Shaman, Druid, Hunter, or Warlock victories. So we'll try try some Druid Helper. Now I'm on the America's account. Maybe somebody would want to play me. Maybe not. Um, it would be a miracle and a nice thing if net neutrality was saved. Uh, that will, at the very least, move us forward towards the next sleazy thing that the, that the internet service providers are are gonna try and pull in their oligarchy. Moving on, uh, your gamer has an article. Animal Crossing Pocket Camp is getting a fishing tournament. Uh, I don't think anybody really likes Animal Crossing Pocket Camp though, because it's it's a really bad translation of what what Animal Crossing usually is. Uh, I already talked about the game Cypher. Did did this one have a link to Steam? Let me just make sure I've wishlisted it. Yes, it's on the wishlist. Hmm. At the end of the turn, give a... No Alright, US video game hardware sales topped 1 million in January according to Gamma Sutra. Uh, that's nice. Uh, so, the analyst firm's report, one of the analysts, the NPD group, uh, let's see, says hardware spending in January grew 119% year over year, coming in at 2.7. 27 no 278 million dollar uh, dollars for the month what inherently is increasing hardware sales it's probably the Nintendo Switch and the PlayStation 4 Pro and the Xbox One each one of those is probably getting a decent bump in sales uh, however Beastcast, the giant Beastcast, was talking about maybe it's time to... They were wondering if it's time to save up for the next console. I don't think so. Like, I really, really wouldn't be surprised if the next console we hear announced from a big creator is a different version of the Switch. Because the Switch was an underpowered machine. It needs more storage. It needs uh, probably not more power, but more batteries would be cool. Let's see. Job done. Uh, so, yeah, I'm not expecting an Xbox 2 or a PlayStation 5. Maybe a PlayStation 5 would come out in the next couple of years, uh, but I don't know if there's enough games for the PlayStation 4 even in the next couple of years to justify it. Hmm. Let's see. PC Gamer has an article called Avernum and Thimbleweed Park are finding homes for hints in modern games. Whether external guides or in-game systems, there's a place for hints in games that, that revive old school design ideas. This is an interesting, like, opinion piece. Um, and it's sort of true. Uh, Assassin's Creed Revelations, as I'm playing it, is the worst. Literally the worst about not telling you what you're supposed to do, what you're not supposed to do, not breadcrumbing you. Uh, I will start a memory in it and just not even no totally totally be confused uh, do I want to just go to random card no um, thimbleweed park is a point-and-click adventure 
Whereas the other game of Farinum is it looks like a top-down RPG dungeon master style game. Hmm. Hmm. And if if you ever listen to the developer commentary for I believe Portal or Portal 2 you learn just how much effort they put into making those, the levels so that the player knew what they were doing and knew what they were supposed to do and they yeah, weren't and confused the and Assassin's Creed Revelations Worse than any of the other Assassin's Creed games I've played so far. Just doesn't. And on top of that, now that I'm at the later levels, there, there was one level where you had to sneak into a palace for no real reason because you're friends with the prince in the palace and be unseen to sneak in with the palace. And, and then you talk to the prince and after you get the cutscene talking to the prince, you then have to sneak out of the palace to be unseen. And it feels like it's probably for a storyline reason that, that you had to be unseen. But the legitimate reason why the character at that point would sneak in or be at any point in trouble with or uh, that the guards would be on guard for the guy doesn't make much sense. It sort of makes sense, but it doesn't make enough sense. Yeah, I doubt I'm gonna win here. I've got my icons back on my page. Uh, so there's not too many more articles here. Arc System Works has a PC PC game has an article called Arc System Works Talks Fighting Games on PC and Why None of Their Male Fighters Have Nipples. That'll be interesting. Um, hmm. I think I already read this article that they just gave it a different title. Or... No, I read an article that was something. Uh, Alright, here we go. Wes, I have kind of a weird question. Where are the guy's nipples? Even Mario has nipples now. Hmm. Let's see. Play this. Play this. Play this. So Morai says, I heard that overseas it would, wouldn't be too well received, so we intentionally abstracted that, then he laughs in brackets, which I don't know why you put that in brackets and not parentheses. I think in the US and Europe it's more acceptable, but in Asia it's not really... So we kind of fudged it a bit. I, I thought it was totally acceptable to have some form of expression of that. I guess that's cultural. So here you have a Japanese person saying that, uh, that it is unacceptable to show nipples of men, uh, of guys in Asia. Uh, but it's totally cool in the U.S. He's he's lying through his teeth, I believe. Uh, maybe I'm a little wrong on this one. I I'm pretty sure he's lying through his teeth. Let's play the Murloc Shaman deck. Uh, I think it's the exact opposite that they got the message wrong and thought that the U.S. or Europe or some other country that they care about would be offended uh, because here's here's why I think he's wrong he's lying 
and and this is a typical Bro, Japanese response to 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 be gracious and kind. Uh, the Japanese have public baths all over the place, so guys see guys' nipples all the time. They have no problem with it. They don't care. Uh, they see guys naked all the time in the public bus completely My and they don't care uh, there are hmm at least in the the gay love animes and stories and mangas that are there their nipples are shown all the time uh, I'm trying to think if nipples are shown um in just general anime things yeah they kind of are you don't see too many guys running shirtless it uh, more often than not you'll run into scenarios where there's an entire harem of girls that are running around topless but the guy's still wearing a shirt uh, so maybe there is some point to that um, but I kind of don't believe it. it. It happens. Not that much. Hmm. hmm. But I, they're specifically, I think, talking about Dragon Ball Z. So, then the question I should ask is... Let me just open up Google and type in Goku nipples this will ruin my internet search I images yeah uh, here I'm seeing Goku with black circles for nipples not super super defined or anything um, here I'm seeing other characters with nipples uh, a lot of this is fan art but some of this clearly is original art too hmm. yep yep <laughs> yep So, yeah, that kind of solves that issue right there. Here you have a the creators of Dragon Ball Fighters adding censorship that the original creators of the Dragon Ball series didn't do. Uh, mostly because they keep getting negative, like, super SJW feedback from the mostly... SJW mainstream media people. I mean, really, it is. Hmm. Let's see, he's still talking about. It. For the record, I am of the school thought that it's acceptable as a form of expression, but I noticed that whenever they take some of the artwork that I do with nipples in Asia, it gets erased. So, that's the thing, is as soon as he gets. As soon as any Japanese person gets and the impression that that it's not appreciated, that they don't want them doing something that way, they they will comply. That is that is the Japanese uh, experience in school in a nutshell. You will conform. You will comply. You will do whatever uh, makes everybody else around you most com comfortable. Uh, Unless, of course, you're maybe a family member and then you treat your family like dirt behind closed doors. Sometimes that happens too. But that doesn't really have anything to do with video games. Uh, he also says Capcom characters. Well, actually, Ishiwatari says Capcom characters don't have it either. Uh, it's a very tedious process to either draw it or not draw it, depending on which region of assets are going to go, so we just decided to keep it universal. Oh, and I guess they are talking about Blaze Blue characters. Um. <sighs> hmm. 
Here's one. If either of you could make an anime fighting game for any series of property, what would you like to adapt? Uh, Ishiwatari says The Simpsons. Mori says Family Guy. And T Titans is one of my personal face favorites. Oh, and the Powerpuff Girls. There, there you have a nice presentation of what anime means to a Japanese person. Uh, also, uh, they consider any animation pretty much anime. Uh, so, not a single what a Westerner would call anime listed there. The Simpsons, Family Guys. Powerpuff Girls, Teen Titans. Um, if you're more interested in this interview, head to PC Gamers. Uh, I still don't believe the nipple thing, though. I feel like if it's if it's an Asian country that's removing it, it's probably not not Japan. It, it could be South Korea. It could be Taiwan. It could be China. It could be. Uh, one of those countries that I'm just not thinking about because clearly the original artwork for Dragon Ball that they had not excessively large nipples or anything but they had nipples and that's really more argument more conversation about nipples than I thought I'd ever have hmm do I want to kill this guy I think I do So, a new Overwatch hero was probably teased according to PC Gamer uh, by Blizzard. Uh, let's see. There's a tweet that says declassified after action report Operation White Dome. Um, I don't know if Overwatch really needs more characters because of the balancing issue that comes around with that but I guess maybe do I have a timer running or I may have accidentally not hit the timer nope I didn't so I could have been going let's see I have been going for an hour all right well we're not gonna break this up anymore let's try to speed some stuff up and I might just keep uh, TechSpot has an article that says Apple may have made it too easy to call uh, emergency services for help. Over 20 accidental calls daily from one facility. Um, I The picture here is uh, to call, it seems to be from the Apple Watch, you can accidentally call. The 911 or the emergency services. Uh, in a funny way, I was looking at a phone and, and there's this medical information that you can get uh, and, and have on your lock screen so that if you, you're found convulsing on the ground, the, the EMS might have more information about like what pills you're on and such. But at least on the Samsung S7, you have to press emergency call and then in the lower left hand corner, there's just this kind of icon of a nurse. And um, and I was thinking as I'm about to push this button, am I about to call 911 or some kind of nurse service? Because this doesn't say information. This is just a picture. And I pressed it anyways and turned out it, that was the thing that gives you the medical information. Very, very helpful, honestly. To have that, particularly for older people, uh, Apple. I don't sing Apple's praises too often, but they definitely deserve some applaud for making any a better system to get the important medical things quicker. In the cases of older people who might be having an emergency. Uh, I was skipping over to a very different thing. I guess I'm swinging back and forth here between somewhat sex related things or, or body related things and not. The Caligula Effect Overdose has a full length trailer. I've been wondering what in the world this game is for about a month. It is 
a big launch, definitely, of something that I think they're going to try and make like the Persona series. Everybody seems to be dressed in mostly white and shades of gray with maybe some slight red uh, accents. There's all these kind of anime-esque characters that they seem to have two modes in which they they turn from a normal person into kind of a fighter like Persona. Uh, RPG, it's a 3D RPG looking thing. Um, the name is extremely weird, the Caligula effect. But without some more translation and more explanation of the story, I don't know if it is has anything to do with anything. Um, I don't even know if it's directly a reference to Caligula throwing orgies, which he he's claimed to have done, or if it has to do with Caligula uh, running the country into the ground, uh, which. Uh, was kind of was done who knows whether any of that's true because it happened so long ago this this really does look like a persona ripoff which might not be a terrible thing since persona is limited to playstation i believe and so if this is a pc version of something almost as good as persona and does the s similar things i might be willing to do it assuming they translate it to English. It's also weird there's, to my knowledge, no manga or anime out to begin with. The game is coming out right in line. So this could be a complete and total failure of a series. Like, the f or it could be the, the next Fate Stay done even better. Hmm. Right, they're talking about a catharsis effect. It seems like you can, these characters can do something that sends like a glowing red gem through their chests. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, if that's the way that they implement their powers. It says it's coming out for the PS4. Oh man, is this not coming to PC either? Nope, it isn't. Darn it. Ah, uh, maybe it will, maybe it will, but no, no note right now. PlayStation 4, May 17th in Japan. And still with the trailer, I still have not a lot of clues as far as what this game is. But that name keeps grabbing my attention every time. Uh, it's definitely intriguing. Hmm. Let's see. Does any of this matter? No. That's not worth reporting on. Uh, I already mentioned it, but Snapchat shares tumbled after Kylie Jenner tweeted uh, that nobody was using that she wasn't using Snapchat anymore. How much did they drop? A single tweet wiped away billion one billion dollars of off the market value of Snapchat, which. Let's face it, the value of Snapchat was highly, highly overinflated. Uh, people were just buying it from name recognition, and and I heavily suspect a, a significant number of stocks are overvalued. Let's see, Kim Kardashian's half-sister tweeted her 24.5 million followers, so does anyone else not open Snapchat anymore, or is it just me? Oh, this is so sad. Uh, Jenner has been one of the app's most popular users. Immediately following a tweet, the company's stock started to fall and eventually declined by 6%, clearing $1.3 billion off the market cap and dropping the shares near to the IPO price of $17. Uh, which, let's be fair, the IPO price for Snapchat at $17 is probably too high because I don't know how you make any money. Just on the face of it how do you make money on snapchat do you run ads against these messages does anybody click on those ads uh i i don't know how snapchat works but i bet 
You don't. Right. A Rhode Island representative wants to tax violent video games. The money would be used for counseling and mental health programs in schools. Uh, a lot of people are not happy with that idea. Um, I think probably video game fans that are not happy with that idea might want to reconsider it though. Like, let's not just, if I would, if I have any influence, which I don't, I would say let's not immediately just dig in our heels and choose sides. The idea that money is taken out of violent video game creators, people that would make a M-rated game, which uh, that's the only real way you could get a game labeled violent is if it was rated M. Uh, that they have to pay a tax um, that that money goes directly to counseling the youth and the, uh, and the mentally disturbed in schools, which clearly the U.S. government isn't going to pay for that at this rate. Uh, so maybe that's this is would do some good and when playing like Assassin's Creed Revelations I know everything keeps coming back to that because that's the game I'm playing right now there is a blood toggle on and off and the blood toggled on doesn't add anything to the game honestly so many games that come out are rated M just because uh, I would draw a distinct line from something like uh, it seems like Wolfenstein 2, the new Colossus, as part of its artistic creation, wanted to glorify violence and there's some nudity in it and there's blood in it and all that. It's a first person shooter about shooting uh, fictional versions of Nazis. That makes sense. Doom, a better example, totally wants to glorify violence and all of that. That makes sense. And so, in those instances, if I was paying a dollar more for those games because of this tax, like, I'd be like, alright, that's fine. But then there's so many other instances where blood and violence is just thrown in for no reason, and they just get that M rating because, why not? It doesn't seem like it really stops anybody from playing M rated games. Uh, maybe maybe this is a solution like i like the idea of getting money however you can do it uh from the Options. from Options. well getting money for counseling and mental health programs because that's clearly what i think needs to happen uh the if this was a similar law where it said Rhode Island representative wants to tax games with microtransactions to fund uh, gambling, addiction, education, and and uh, and prevention programs. So, uh, which I believe is what happens. I'm not 100% sure in Las Vegas is that the number one contributor to anti-addiction. Uh, programs are the casinos in Las Vegas because they don't want people to be addicted. They, they want them to come in, spend the money, have some time, not expect to really win big, and then leave and feel like they had a good experience. Uh, the last thing they want is somebody who's always there, who's taking out loans on their houses, who's causing problems, who's upset, those are not the kind of customers a casino wants. And in the same way, video games don't want mentally disturbed people playing their games. Uh, no, they want mentally disturbed people to be healthy and then play their games. Makes the same sense. Or maybe if you're so mentally disturbed that you can't play the game because it's not healthy for you, then I think video game creators should want that too. Uh, what I definitely don't want, however, is uh, the President of the United States to spout off old school talking points that are directly from the NRA and other lobbyist pro-gun points in which 
they try to blame movies and video games and uh, TV and comic books. Why, why not? Let's uh, blame everybody. All that violence you see in every other thing is the reason for school shootings. Not the fact that somebody's mentally disturbed and there's no mental health support system in the United States. Or the fact that uh, guns are too easily to get. Or the fact that it's impossible for people to, uh, to take away guns from people that shouldn't have guns. Who are mentally disturbed. Have a clear mental history of, of being mentally disturbed. Uh, or the fact that there could be 18 calls, which is, I believe, the number now uh, that went to the sheriff about the suspect who shot up the, the school in Florida. They went to the sheriff and they were not acted on uh, appropriately. Uh, there's too much bureaucracy. None of that, according to gun lobbyist groups like the NRA, none of that has anything to do with anything. It's because video games are too violent. And this coming out coming from Donald Trump who is the oldest president ever who probably hasn't played a video game in 30 years if ever uh, it's ridiculous and it's just getting spouted off as talking points that lobbyists are handing to him to create diversions and distractions uh, every single test that is attempted to blame video games has failed every single survey every single uh, uh, experiment has failed they've almost all failed in the exact opposite direction saying that people who play violent video games uh, compared to the general public are actually less violent and that starts to make a little sense when you think about well maybe they found a healthy outlet uh, Sure, there is a trope of people getting angry and throwing controllers. Uh, personally, I've never thrown a controller in my life. Uh, I've never done anything violent whatsoever because of a video game. If I don't want to play the video game anymore, I stop playing. That's that simple. Uh, so, this is not only a ridiculous Jack Thompson argument where Jack Thompson was this lawyer who who eventually got disbarred for his ridiculousness uh, of trying to blame and regulate video games for no real reason uh, uh, no legitimate reason at least to, for this to come back up and, and it's ridiculous it's totally ridiculous uh, the Shooter in the theater several years ago, one of the red uh, guy. there was a shooter in the theater, he had dyed his hair red, I forget his name. Um, he was specifically, uh, it was specifically misreported that he played video games, and because he played video games, that's why he was violent. Uh, the truth came out very quickly. He played Pac-Man in the 80s, and his friends thought he was weird because he didn't play video games at all. Uh, which, honestly, if I'm going to say anything, if you know somebody that has never played a video game or doesn't, they're probably Amish or something, like from a very restrictive family, I would keep an eye out for them. Like, the vast majority of people have played something play something every now and then uh, people play solitaire on their computers that's a video game people play mobile phone games those are video games if you're not playing anything at all that means you're you're pretty much not adding very much fun into your life and that's not a healthy lifestyle but I guess I don't want to get in too much of the rent anybody who's listening to me probably already knows the truth most people with with half a lick of common sense aren't gonna fall for it's the violent video games argument again maybe when it was it was a generation or two before when and people didn't know what video games were that's fine there there's still good like 
screenshot mining you could do. You can get an adults only game and and get some violence. You can take the the bloody fatalities from the most recent Mortal Kombat game and make a ridiculous article that tries to claim video games are too violent. Uh, but it's really, really hard to make that stick when you look at things like Grow, Grow Up, Gone Home, uh, Super Mario Odyssey, no every single Nintendo Tango's. game that's out. Uh, Nintendo went out of their way to make Splatoon a first person shooter with paintball guns uh, friendly. Uh, we could, we could go down the entire ESRB list and, and get games. Um, get, get other games that would make sense. Alright, do I have anything that will save me? Let's see. This. 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 Job done. I don't have enough mana. And in return. My head is full. Hmm. Gamma Sutra has an art article called Live and Let Die How Apathy Killed No One Lives Forever. Um. Let's see. This is actually coming from Kotaku. Options. Let's see. Your homes. The proposed remake of the stealth shooter No One Lives Forever is dead because in the water because no one Reporting really cares. Let's see. Despite the best efforts of Night Dive Studios, the team in charge of the now on hold System Shock reboot franchise might never see the light of day again because nobody can or rather wants to work out who owns the right. You see Activision, Warner Brothers, and 20th Century Fox each claim to the license, meaning Night Dive would have to talk to all three parties and untangle the convoluted legal web to push ahead with the proposed remaster. And that happens too often in large corporate structures. It's like, yeah, nobody cares that Oh, I, I screwed that up. Um, I totally screwed that up. Right. That everybody will claim they own the rights until they're taken to court and forced to admit they don't own the rights to everything if you can get away with it. Um, and in a weird way, we, we heard an earlier story about star control uh, where two people are claiming their own rights. The the best way to often suit, fix these things is just ignore all three. Uh, what Deep Silver should probably do is just ignore Activision, Warner Brothers, and 20th Century Fox and make the remake and and put it out there and then wait till to see which one of them actually sues uh, because once they go into that legal form and, start, and are actually paying lawyers to do the discovery that's what the discovery often means uh, I need to check here and make sure I'm actually doing right yep like that would be the best way to probably suit settle this is just make the game and see who sues and that's probably not the best way for night dive to run a business but it'll work um, moving on, Guilty Gear XRD Revision 2, REV 2, has some game balance refinement update that's going to launch March 1st on PS4 and PS3. Hmm. There's too many Guilty Gear games, honestly. Too many Guilty game Gear games. Guilty Gear XRD REV2 is available on PS4, PS3, and PC. I guess I'll search to see if I've got that one on my list of potential uh, potential games. 
Let's see. I guess it's Guilty Gear XRD Revelator is the main game, and then you have to buy DLC to update it. That really doesn't make much sense at all. Uh, that's a that's a lot of stuff. That's a lot of stuff to buy. I don't think I there's not a great chance that I'm gonna make it make it to ever playing the Guilty Gear games. Alright, now I'm back to the Humble Bundle with the classic bundle. We already talked about that. Definitely some games on there. If I hadn't overblown my budget, I would at least spend a dollar and get the Tesla effect. Uh, and Shadowrun and Shadowrun Dragonfall. Uh, Broken Sword 5 I already have, but not a bad deal. Not a bad deal if you're getting four, uh, three out of four things for a dollar. Um, so I've got a job listing here, I've got a job listing here, I've got a job listing here. Hmm. Uh, Gamma Sutra has a article blog that says Cultist Simulator Presales, Why, What, and How Much. Um, it's talking about pre-sales from the creator of Cultist Simulator, which I don't think is a game that really succeeded that well, so let's see if we can just skip down to the bottom. Hmm. Lessons here. Highlighted text in bold. Our problem as indies is to get noticed in the first place. At our level, there is always far, far more people who have never heard of your game than people have heard it. And then there's a second paragraph labeled number two that has nothing highlighted as far as text. And a third paragraph labeled number three that's not listed either, and a fourth and a fifth. So if I... Uh, like five is only a sentence. Make sure you know why you're going to Alpha or Early Access or Paid Beta or any other pre-launch sales. Most importantly, pick whether you're looking for cash or feedback. Choose a star to steer by and stick to it. Valid argument, in my opinion. Yep. But honestly, if you're looking for cash in the pre-order perspective, then you're you're probably dead in the water. Uh, you're not going to finish your game if you're already out of cash by the time you get to early access. Uh, you need money to last to through the development of your next game. Uh, some of that. Alright, so let's go back to Twitter before we wrap up here and we'll go into the post-show play. Um, Let's see, Chapter 1 of Elite Dangerous' new season, Beyond, goes live next week. Hmm. Let's see. What's this? Hmm. This game slap city is still in development from Loot Odyssey. They added a new character from a game called Princess Remedy. It's it's kind of a Smash Bros. If Smash Bros. was made by a small independent uh, team company, just including its its own people. Papers, please. Short film debate debuts tomorrow for 10 minute, 10 minute video. So, yep, go out there and check that out if you're interested. Let's do this. Uh, that was what I was supposed to do. Amazing. Yeah, that was amazingly stupid.
Hmm. Alright, I'm continuing to scroll down. Continuing to scroll down to see if... GTA 5 Stunt Crew Evolve brings its skills to the Doomsday Heist. What in the world? Are there stunt crews now that make stunts in GTA and that makes them popular? Hmm. Hmm. Oh yes, it seems not too many people are particularly happy with the the DLC for pre-ordering uh, the next part of Final Fantasy 15 being Gordon Freeman uh, Gordon Freeman in his Half-Life outfit with his crowbar doesn't doesn't particularly even look like Gordon Freeman so it might just be the the outfit without actually being Gordon Freeman um, it's not a good match it's insulting to people who are still waiting for Half-Life 3, those insane people out there. And it's it just doesn't match Final Fantasy XV and their boy band artistic style. Um, we've seen Square Enix is literally going to give any kind of pre-order bonus license thing to anybody that wants it at this point. And they, I believe, had an Assassin's Creed tie-in. I believe they... Did everything else? Um, did have done every anything that is suggested to them? They're cool with, uh, which tells you that um, that your Final Fantasy 16 is probably going to be full of microtransactions and sellouts, and it's not going to have any heart or story in it because Square Enix doesn't care anymore. Hmm. Uh, according to Sega Europe, an hour ago, at least, the talented voice actor for Bayonetta would be joining them live for this thing called Game Blast 18, which is probably some kind of game jam. Legendary Gary is two RPGs and one, and I want more of both. Let's see what that article is. Hmm. Apparently, yes, people are now famous for doing stunts in Grand Theft Auto 5. I guess that may have been happening for a while. Uh, Legendary Gary is two RPGs and one. I want more. Is this PC Gamer article. And then they're linking to a picture that's not found. Hmm. Yeah, this, this feels like an advertisement for a game. Hmm. I'm seeing no. Are, no information about when it's coming out or if it is out, where to get it. Hmm. Like where do you where do you get this game? Where do you play it? There's no link, there's nothing here, so that's just wasting everybody's time. Two hours ago, Evil Within number thirty five came out. I honestly ooh. I should double check to make sure I scheduled all the Evil Within footage. Like, it's possible I didn't. Uh, yeah, at episode 35, it should be very close to the end of that series. Um, Machinima has the five best pets in video games. Why am I following Machinima? At all. Hmm. 
Hardware seller Massdrop says Nvidia predicts graphic prices will continue to go up throughout the year. That sucks. That's not what I wanted to hear. Hmm. Burnout PC remasters is coming to the PC later this year. We already knew that. The question was, was it going to come to Steam? And we still don't have a real response there. Time runs out on me. Hmm. Mm -hmm. 2D adventure game Taylor mixes nature nature backgrounds and hatchy animation to great effect. Uh, yeah, this looks slightly interesting. Let's see what happens here. Tala, T A L A. Hmm. Looks like it's a point and click adventure, but again, no article, like, game's official site. So, how do you order it? Or play it? Do you just play it on screen? Have we hit another one of those, is that what Game Blast is, and another one of those things where they announce games but they don't bother to ever tell you when they're coming out? Well, TechSpot says the NRA just gave Ajit Pai the Courage Under Fire award for serving, saving the internet. Like, is this a real, or is this a goof? To look here. Yep, they actually did it. In recognition of his grace and dignity and principled discipline while repealing net neutrality, is the quote. Uh, Hearthstone number 842 aired three hours ago. Hmm. Kingdom Come Deliverance has sold more than 1 million copies. I believe Kingdom Come De Deliverance is either a sleeper hit or more likely it's paying people like PC Gam Gamer to talk about it because uh, there's a little too many people talking about that game in my opinion considering what it is. Hey, in a nice callback I'm seeing a man's nipples. Somebody got a Binding of Isaac tattoo on their chest. Uh, and it got retweeted by the creative Binding of Isaac. <laughs> Gee, if only I had a daily quest to play Murlocs, I would have been done. Uh, Final Fantasy 15 is set to expand into 2018 and beyond. Sure, kind of believe that because they seem not to seem to to want to milk that forever. What's this? A tiny build party bundle. Bundle Fest Nine. What is this? This takes you to Fanatical, the owner of hum Humble Bundle, but they didn't change the name. So Fanatical is, I suppose, slowly trying to drive people from Humble Bundle to Fanatical. We'll see if that works in a year or two, and then they'll probably shut down Humble Bundle. Hmm. One hour of shining residence refrain English gameplay. Alright, that 
might be interesting. My hand is too full. Till the War Saga Thrones of Britannia shows off eight minutes of footage. Let's do this. And do this. It's way past time Amazing. to wrap up. Uh, Samsung breaks ground on a new EUV manufacturing facility in South Korea. What did? What are they gonna make at that? So apparently Shiny Resonance is a 3D JRPG game. Way too many of those. Hmm. It's coming out this summer, so we'll see. What is the EUV? Extreme Ultraviolet Manufacturing Facility. Uh, which is set up with extreme ultraviolet lithography equipment capable of overcoming the nano level technology limitations. Samsung will initially focus on seven nanometer low power plus processes. So, you know, better battery usage and more space. Come on, give me a quick disconnect. As we're trying to wrap up here. Uh, I could have wrapped it up right now, couldn't I? The, the very next article was the announcement of the stream, which that means I'm done with the news. Let the hunt begin for yeah. Doomhammer. Let's see. In all I've got is a bunch of jobs I don't want to talk about. So, back to the top of the Twitter feed, and let's just try to play this game. One more victory and then Silent Post Jail. Instead of. Uh, hmm. Like, here's an NRA tweet I just saw somebody else retweet where they're now trying to blame the police who certainly did play a role in this instance of the sheriff's not responding but but literally the the fact that the gun was too easy that that is really the easiest point whatsoever is that the fact that a clearly obviously mentally disturbed person with a record uh, was able to get access to a gun is a problem. Fix that and no other problem is as bad uh, or as big of an issue. Let's go ahead and that probably wasn't the right move because now this guy's just gonna kill this. Hmm. Nobody came on the chat. Not not unsurprising. These Friday streams never happen. They never work. Uh, if anything, I might shift. If if my schedule worked better that way, which it doesn't, I I would consider shifting them to Saturday streams. Uh, but that can just changes very little. <laughs> the, the other thing about this Florida school shooter, because he has a history of mental problems, he is very much in the case to go for not guilty for a reason of insanity. Which is a hard case to prove because you would have to literally prove uh, that uh, 
that he did not know his actions would cause harm and I don't know if you could prove that but in a generic term the way I feel about it he, he probably isn't guilty for reasons of insanity and at the very least he, he should be locked up for mental uh, help but in until he's no longer a threat to himself or others but but I, I really think he's almost a victim himself uh, of a poor support system. Of course, he's still alive and many other people aren't. Or, yeah. And I know people want that revenge for, for society, for his transgression against society as much as this transgression against the people they actually assaulted and killed. Uh, X marks the spot. But yeah, I'm talking about that too much and I just, man, in all honesty, I am not having a fun time with Hearthstone. I am tired of having to do these daily quests. And, and just deal with the frustration of all of this. I believe I have all of the European account done. So we don't have to do that in the post show. I can get my secondary account in here and play a couple of games and let myself win to, to get to the America's account. But that challenge a friend on the Asian account, that's going to take a long time. Let's do this here and this here. So I could have played that instead. Just clear the board. Hey, I might actually win here, but if he's got even one spell that does, no, he's he's one. He does this, he does that, he's one. He's still got four, so all he's gonna do is attack with this, and he's one. And it's probably been about an hour or two hours on top of with like 45 minutes now just take the victory and go I don't care let's see this and then this do that Well, if he con continues to stream me along, I'm gonna, I am gonna win. But he doesn't. Well, a frustration, frustratingly, a frustrating ending to a frustrating stream. Uh, what can you say? Yeah. I'm gonna jump on my secondary account. Now is I suppose a good time since nobody's on the chat anyways. Uh, just let myself win a couple of times, two times here, five times here, seven games in which I'll have to play myself. Then I need to go on top of that and try and do a challenge of friend on the Asian account. That's it for the stream. Stay, stay tuned for the post show. As always, I ask you to like, share, subscribe, comment, and watch every second of my videos. If you want a friend to follow me on basically any social media sites, there's a bunch of links down below. If you want to support me, gift me a game on Steam. Thank you for watching. Have a good evening.